before we start solving absolute value equations, let's quickly go over the definition. When you take the absolute value of negative 3 or any negative number for that matter, it turns it into a positive number. Then, of course, if you have absolute value of 3, then it just stays as positive 3. For example, if we have absolute value of x equals 7, then x has to be 7 or negative 7. Here's an example. Absolute value of 2x minus 15 equals 11. So we're going to take care of the positive portion first. So we start by writing down 2x minus 15, what's in the absolute value sign, and we're going to set it equal positive 11. And if we solve this, we get x equals 13. Now we need to take care of the negative portion of the answer where Again, we're going to leave what's in the absolute value sign the way it is. However, the right side of the equal sign, we're going to change it into negative 11. Therefore, the answer to this equation will be x equals 13 or 2. Here's our second example. If you have absolute value of 10x plus 2, minus 18 equals negative 12, what we have to do is we need to go ahead and make it so that we have the absolute value sign portion by itself on the left side. So we're going to go ahead and add 18 to both left and the right, where we get absolute value of 10x plus 2 equals positive 6. Then, just like we did here, we need to go ahead and separate this absolute value equation into two equations, where the first one will be where the outcome is positive. And then the second one will be, notice once again, we leave what's in the absolute value sign alone and change only what's on the other side, on the right side of the equation into negative, where we get And also, don't forget, it's always or, meaning the final answer to this equation will be x equals 4 over 10 or negative 8 over 10. Of course, you can go ahead and reduce these fractions um, or change it into a decimal answer as well. On that note, I'd like to make one more, um, show you one more example. When you have absolute value of 10 minus 3x plus 5 equals 2, just like we did up here, we need to go ahead and make the absolute value portion by itself, so we're going to subtract 5 from the left and the right, where we get absolute value of 10 minus 3x equals negative 3. Here, if you weren't thinking about the question, you would just go ahead and separate it into two equations, one positive 3 and one negative 3. However, by definition, absolute value of anything must be always positive, meaning when you have absolute value of an equation equal a negative value, the answer to this equation is just simply no solution. There's no point or there's no reason to work this out any further because even if you get an answer and then if you plug it into the original equation, it will not work. So once again, remember that when you have a negative answer or negative number on the right side of the equation, the answer will always be no solution. Now that we learned how to solve absolute value equations, let's take a look at absolute value inequalities. If we're given absolute value of x is less than 5, once again, we need to separate that into two inequalities. First is going to be x is less than 5. Notice it's written exactly the same without the absolute value sign. However, the second one the 5 becomes negative 5, and more importantly, the less than sign turns into a greater than sign. So when we change that 5 into a negative 5, we must switch or flip the inequality sign in the other direction. And another important thing here is that when it's a less than or less than equal, we always use the word n in between the two inequalities, which means that we could rewrite this as x is greater than negative 5, less than 5. Here's another example to show you what 
how this is used. If we're given absolute value of 2x minus 3 is less than equal to less than 11, then we'll start by saying 2x minus 3 is less than 11. So the first equation or first inequality is always the easy one. All you got to do is remove the inequality sign where we get or x is less than 7. And so that's the key word when it's less. We have 2x minus 3. However, for the second inequality, instead of the less than sign, we have to use the greater than sign and make that 11 into negative 11. So we have negative 4, which we could rewrite these two, uh, and it's n here, of course. We could rewrite these two inequalities as x is greater than negative 4 for this portion and less than 7 for that portion. What if we use the greater than sign instead of the less than sign? Is anything different? Let's check it out. First, we're going to write x is greater than 5 for the positive portion. Only difference is that we have to use the word or in between x is greater than 5, x is less than negative 5. Notice again, for the second portion or the negative portion, you have to switch or swap the greater than sign with the less than sign. And of course, change that positive 5 into negative 5 because a number cannot be greater than 5 and less than 5 at the same time, we have to use the word or. And at the same time, we're not able to rewrite it as one single inequality. Let's do this or use this on an example. If we're given absolute value of 5x plus 3 greater than 2, we're going to write the first inequality as it's written without the absolute value sign, where we get x is greater than negative 1 over 5. And of course, we're going to use the word or because it's greater than and set up the second equation with the less than negative 2. So we get 5x is less than negative 5, x is less than negative 1. Once again, if you notice, a number cannot be greater than negative 1 over 5 and at the same time be less than negative 1. So our final answer will be x is greater than negative 1 over 5 or x is less than negative 1. Thank you.